Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Conversations with Lachelle. I'm Lachelle Yuli, and as you know, I like to bring industry professionals in the skin and health um, community to just kind of enlighten us on any challenges and opportunities. And I could not be happier today. I'm smiling, and you'll see why in a minute, because I got Candace Holyfield, the six-figure spa chick here. And Candace is a pioneer, especially uh, in this community, but more importantly, bringing awareness to Black estheticians, and she's been doing this for over 15 years, and I'm just excited to have her on. Candice, how you doing? I am so thankful to be here. You did such an amazing job. Thank I you. am honored um, to be sitting with you, and I look forward to some amazing things we can do together. Candice right now has agreed to mentor me. I'm so happy <laughs> because as people know, like I'm still growing. And even my channel, I'm doing this as I'm growing and hopefully sharing some of the things that I'm learning to impart on other professionals. And tell us a little bit about your history in this community as an institution. Yes. Yeah, so everybody thinks I'm an institution, but I'm not. Okay. I'm a massage therapist. So I was a massage therapist. Um, I was a medical assistant. I was a clinical lab manager. I went to school. I got an associate degree in science. Wow. Um, and I didn't get into massage therapy until later, maybe 2010 or 11, when I opened up a kid's day spa. Um, because I had a kid and I was just trying to, you can't do massage without a license. I'm like, what can I do? And so I opened up a kid's spa. And then once I got my spa, my storefront, I hired a massage therapist. And I taught her how to do upper body massage. And her numbers immediately went up. And that's how I started working with institution. So you had a kid's day spa. Mm -hmm. How long was that running? That was in 2010. That was like my first spa business. I have never heard anyone who did a kid's day oh, spa. I made hundreds of thousands of dollars from Groupon with my kids' day spa. And was it just your standard massages on them or was it no, more health? Um, I had a nail tech with me. So they got their nails painted. They got a little face mask. Oh, I love they got that. little massages. They had robes, slippers. Oh, I love that. It was that. like a really big deal in Memphis where I'm from. Like I was like the number one kid's spa in the city. Wow, so you started off from the gate once you started doing your thing as a success. Mm -hmm. I guess let's get right into it. What what are the things that helped you instinctively become successful, right? Not just the businesses that you created. It's something that's in you mm -hmm. that you know how to do. And I have to say for my viewers, and I have such respect, the more I'm in this industry, uh, the women, something that you guys do when you, you the business women yeah. here. You are a businesswoman and you do things with such order and decency. Yeah. Can you share a little bit about that? So if I completely be honest, I made six figures my first year in business, but I didn't have a choice. It's like I was broke. I didn't have any money. I had a new baby. Um, I can't remember. I don't think I had a car. Mm. So I had to make my business work. Like I was betting my whole livelihood on going to massage school, passing that test. And having a business, like my entire livelihood depended on it. So everything was serious to me. It wasn't a side hustle to me. It wasn't someday I'm going to do it, someday I'm not. Like this was my entire livelihood depended on it. So for me, I just hit the ground running. Like the, when I was in school, I was doing free massages. Yeah. Um, you know, having mm -hmm. the kids, spa party business. So for me, it was like life or death. And so I think that's why I had such major success, making the six figures my first year. Starting with a salon suite. Well, I actually started mobile, got a salon suite, and one year had a storefront with a whole team of people and taught everybody how to make six figures on Groupon. Well, the team of people because you had that much clientele. Because I, I was doing Groupon, so I could not do the people by myself. So I had to hire some people, and I had got a bigger space. I had rooms, so I had a whole team. I was booked with spa parties off of wow. you know, Groupon. And so everybody at my spa, I taught them how to do Groupon as well. And so all of us was making six figures. And back then, six figures was like a big deal because we didn't have all these expenses that we have now. And we didn't yeah. know about coaching and text message marketing systems and content and doing photo shoots. So we were able to keep a lot of our money back then where now we got to spend a lot of money just to make some money. Yeah. I agree. I, I, I talk about this just now in my business class. Like I'm still waiting on that to return on investment. Mm -hmm. But this is why I'm glad I'm speaking to you because you have capitalized your return on investment. Yeah. Even just on our conversation before we sat down, you kind of was giving me some pointers and the things that you're doing. And I'm literally sitting in you 
with you in awe. You know that, right? Oh, I don't know. Like, I do. I'm letting you know. Like, I, I'm, like, a little emotional because uh, I want to get to where you are, and I want to help other people to get to where you are. And I know that our industry has changed so much. Mm -hmm. And I hear you on online and kind of really sort of navigating these estheticians to the best possible mm -hmm. way. What are some of the things that you are seeing in this industry with estheticians either who've been working or new that you feel that they're running up against some dangers with in terms of making money or really becoming um, successful? No, that's a good question. So multiple things. So first thing first, um, there's no operation system there. Like everybody go to esthetician school, go get them a salon suite and start posting on Instagram or TikTok. That doesn't mean long-term. Um, it's no systems there. Hey, what do I do on Mondays? What do I do on Tuesdays? When do I send out an email? Not collecting leads, you know, a private conversation we just had. Yeah. I need my money to be long-term. I need my money to flow. I need my money to be positive. I don't want to, like some people say, one week I make money, one week I don't. That's an operational problem. And so most people have an operational problem. <laughs> wow. Most people have an operational problem. No, that's crazy. Um, coming from sales, I come from sales, cosmetic sales. Mm -hmm. um, this is where I'm great at handling my day-to-day -day admin stuff, but there's something still missing that I'm still learning about the operational thing. And you know what else I heard that you didn't say? It's the discipline. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the clarity. I have to take care of my child. I have to take care of my mm -hmm. life. I don't get to turn back. That's that's actually right now where I'm at. Yeah. I don't get to turn back. I'm mm -hmm. damn sure not working for someone else. Anything that I do will be a partnership, and I even have to know how to negotiate that right. financially and smartly. But there's a discipline in you mm -hmm. that I don't think most people understand that we need mm -hmm. first and foremost. First is clarity. You're very clear. Very clear. <laughs> very, You're very, very clear. clear. And I think speaking to that clarity and also I was just saying this in the class, like, you know, you have to know what works for you right. and, 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 and get the other minutia out of the way. Right. Right. Were you very clear or were you just kind of clear on your discipline and that you needed to make money and that you needed it to flow? And then the other pieces you kind of walk through or was it? No, I'm clear about the next step. So I wouldn't say that I was clear about the next step. I was clear that I had to be of excellence. Number one, I'm black. Hey. I'm a woman. I live in the city of Memphis. When I started 15 years ago, this wasn't a thing. Um, people owning spas and doing massage and facials. It was frowned upon. Like, why are you doing that? You won't make any money. So I had a lot of things against me. Like, I couldn't even get a building. It didn't matter how much money I made. They wouldn't even rent me a building because I was oh, wow. black. And I was a woman. I'm saying I got a spa. And I'm doing, they think I'm doing happy ending. So a lot of different things were up against me. But I was clear that I was going to be somebody. I didn't know I was going to be this multimillionaire and this leader in the spa world. I just said, I'm going to be somebody. I don't know when and I don't know what. And then, you know, it's what we all see now. I love it. And that's how I feel about myself now. And I mm -hmm. think it's little conversations like I get to have with yourself mm -hmm. and other people in the industry. I know that you, one of the things that is helping me right now is mentorship. Mm -hmm. And I know that you are a huge mm -hmm mentor to yeah. people can you talk to us a little bit about your mentees and some of the things that you've helped them with and how it, it, it's changed their lives because i think it's important for estheticians and professionals uh and even any anyone who's listening to this who's not a professional to understand how huge mentorship is mm -hmm. to helping them grow so i want to look at the camera when i say this yeah go ahead girl so in this spa world people it's a lack of leadership um it's a lack of, let me go pay somebody for what I don't know what to do. Everybody thinks they're going to YouTube their way or TikTok their way or wow. whatever. And it's like, a, but she doing it, I'm doing it. It's a lack of leadership. And so that's why mm -hmm. those of us, when everybody go right, we go left. That, that's why we the winners. So number one, it's a lack of leadership. Number two, because people are believing every single thing that the news say. Yeah. Everybody falls into that. With I, no research. I go the opposite. No. You, I go the opposite. You, you ain't going to tell me I can't make no money. You ain't going to tell me I got to shut down my business. I refuse to believe it. I work too hard for it. Yeah. It's going to always be somebody up. It's going to always be somebody down. It'll never change. You got to go fight for what you want. But you know how to pivot, too. But that, com that comes from me not having a choice. But I tell everybody myself, I have paid... Mentors, 45000 at one time, oh. $20,000 at one time. 
Mm. 30 some dollars at one time. And when I didn't have any money, I went to conferences for the weekend for 5000 or maybe it was $300 for the ticket or maybe it was $600. But I just did what I could because I knew that I need to be around other people. I need to be sitting at other people's feet, humbly learning. To this day, I still read four books a month. To this day, I still yeah. go from conference to conference every single week. Well, that's week what I hear. City. I still do it to this day, and that's why I'm the best, and that's why I am number one and such a great leader. From my mentorship program, I got 37 people that made a million dollars. Black, by the way. Wow. And spa and beauty. I lost count how many people made six figures and multi six figures and quit their jobs and started a product line and got a team and got a storefront. I lost count on that. So it's just a matter of who do people trust and those who don't know me. I'm a lot. I ain't going to try yeah. to sugarcoat it. Some yeah. people... Yeah, no she is, with me. You gonna she eat the love me? It's like, oh, my but God. she's fabulous. Every, I love her, honey. Whatever they say, fine with me. Yeah. Whatever they saying, me and mine, we win. Mm-hmm. And it's my duty to make sure that that I'm at the table, that I'm reading the book, and I can bring it back to my people. That's the one thing I love: study. People don't realize the research has to happen, and you have to do your own research. Yeah. That is one thing I love doing. I'm still mm-hmm. doing. Like I don't just take your word for face value. Mm-hmm. You're really not putting me in the box mm-hmm. either. This is why I'm going to where I'm going. If I have to pivot, I have to pivot it, but it won't be because you're telling me to pivot. It's exactly. because I've done the research and I've looked at the demographics of how if this is going to work, if this is going to make sense for my business. So thank you for saying that, and it mm-hmm. makes me feel a little bit more alive. And I wanted, I wanted to tell you something else too, just from um, hearing you speak today and hearing things. You don't give yourself enough credit. I don't think you know yet how amazing you are. Like every time you talk about yourself, you, you take away from yourself. Every time you'll say something good, and then you'll come back and take something away like you're not deserving or hmm. you're not big enough or you're not enough. Your class was um, like my team. They, I was like, come on, I'm going to come. Up, I'm going to go to the share class. Come on. And they were like, yeah, you want to see what he's talking about? I was like, and do? Your class was phenomenal. Thank you. It was well-spoken, uh, good information. I believe in, I agree with every single thing that if you say it, you've been a part of Beverly Hills. That's a big deal. So yeah. I don't want you to say something, take some of it back. I'll be honest about that. It's the money, right? I, I equate, I know that I have success in terms of people and what I can do. But right now, the money is still tight. And so I'm looking, when you hear that in my head, it's until I see the money now of all the things that I've acquired and spent out, that I'll feel a little bit better. And that's something, yes, I have to still work on. So I appreciate you saying that, but that's where it's coming from. Like I've been in this business for a long time. Because when you speak, you're speaking to your peers and you're speaking to them from an authoritative perspective. And so I want to make sure you're always saying from their authority perspective. And so about the money part, only you know money is tight. We're sitting here right now. Everybody, yesterday I was at a conference. They were like, you're rich. I'm like, if I'm rich, I won't be sitting here talking to y'all. I'm not I'm not rich. I know how to make money, but I spend a lot of money just to make money. Like yeah. hotel, my hotel room, $500 a night here yeah. to come <laughs> and support one of my team members. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not rich. I just made some money and I know how to make some more. And I guess, and I guess, yeah, and that makes perfect sense. And it's how you measure success. Mm -hmm. And I'll, and I'll reiterate, I understand that success is more than finances right Mm -hmm. now, but you know, I, one of the things that aesthetics has done and you know this because you just said it, you are Mm -hmm. the prime example has given single mothers Mm -hmm. and women who've been through stuff, men like myself, Mm -hmm. right? Um, an opportunity to have a business. Mm-hmm. And you're phenomenal. I just want you to know that. Thank you. Like, Thank you. I don't care what your money type look like. <laughs> you right. are phenomenal. It's only two black people speaking at this conference. That's a big deal by yourself. It yeah. has nothing to do with money. It is, it is an international show. It's only two black people. I, I, thank you. I, that's, I'll a, take, that's enough for me. I'll take it. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of, let's talk about <laughs> the shows. And I am still, there's a whole nother world of fabulous black female institutions and you part of that you are yeah. part of the leader of that can you tell us a little bit about that world and tell us why do you think that there's there's they're joining the two haven't met yet well they don't come to the shows they don't come to these shows so if they don't come to these shows the people who run these shows or however they pick their speakers or like you gave a nugget earlier they're not asking people can i speak right so if they don't if they don't know you exist you're not acting, can you speak? You're not coming. Is that helping or hurting? Which part? Uh, the fact that they're not coming to the shows. Hurting. Okay. So another person that we love, I won't say his name because no. he's not here to um, clarify. Yeah. But he said, like, he's like, I'm not going to no shows. They can't teach me anything. 
I have to come to these shows for representation. It's, it's not about what they can teach me. It's about my presence. Everybody got to know, y'all, our presence is energy. Our presence is money. Mm -hmm. Our presence. We are the number one spend, spend money people in the world. Our presence. So when we don't show up, they don't know to invite and, us. And I'll say this. At first, at the beginning, when I used to walk around in these shows, I used to get really pissed off. I was like, you know, black and white, they're precious. But as I started to really get to see certain, the same sort of people and mm -hmm. talking to them, I go, they don't have exposure. Exactly. To me. Now, they do have exposure to some black people, some brown people, but it's very different than you and I who mm -hmm. are in our own culture right. and we can come from a very different perspective. Mm -hmm. And some of them just don't have the exposure and are open to it. And of mm -hmm. course, it's new for them. And so there's a response. But the response is I'm willing to learn. You'd be surprised. Right. When I walked around here, the support that I have gotten, mm -hmm. because they're just we're like, the unicorn. We're, we're the black people. Yeah, and they want it. <laughs> yeah. And they want it. And, it, you know, we mm -hmm. keep, you know, our personalities, because I'm being tame right now, right? <laughs> but our personalities, it takes a lot to digest. But what you have to give, mm -hmm. they actually want it. And I think it's important. I didn't know that. I, I thought that they didn't want to black women and the things. They felt that they weren't welcomed here and they didn't come. But I'm hearing that they don't show up. And I'm going to implore, uh, if you, they need y'all here. Yeah. I'll never forget this. And I won't say the company's name because they're downstairs now. Mm. They had a black woman's face, a beautiful black woman's face up selling their very popular machine. Mm. There was no one in the dugout. Who was black? Black. And then I went over to talk to head of sales. Mm -hmm. Devil's advocate poking the bear. I said, is there anybody in the executive office black? woman mm -hmm. who's doing creative because this is a great billboard mm -hmm. to kind of like see there was no one doing that mm -hmm. and so i said so you're doing sort of this performative alliance to us mm -hmm. to fill in the box right so i think that more black women should show up to these shows and let them know that they're here they'd be surprised mm -hmm. I, I go to i've never missed a show in 10 years yeah so i go to shows all year long. You should start sending your mentees out. Uh, you should start like fanning them out. To well, these normally companies. we try to go in big groups so our presence is seen and felt. Um, now that I am who I am, shit, I can walk down the hall by myself. You know, somebody gonna know. So, I mean, the people who run this show, they know me very well. You don't speak here? You don't, Would you ever speak at one of these shows? Um, when I first met them last year, you know, we talked about it, but it never happened. But you're speaking. I need to speak. That's enough for me. Okay. I'm, I'm not mad. I got my own show. Yeah. I got my own show. Talk about that. I, I got the only Black Spa Expo in the world, yep. the only Black Spa Awards in the world, the only Black Spa Hall of Fame in the world. So I'm not upset because I'm not speaking. You speaking warms my heart. I I was talking, Lani's booth was packed. I was like, it's 210, we got to go. I'm like, oh, y'all. I said, Lani, you stay. We gonna go in. The rest of us came up to your class. Lanise's class. We we was there at her class. So I appreciate that support. Y'all speaking is enough for me. I, my heart is warm. That, that mean we're doing more. I don't have to speak. I know I'm a lot. You know, yeah. I know they don't know what might come out my mouth. So but fine you with could, me. And you know what? But I think they, I, I'll say this as just someone just being around here. I would employ that you do if you feel like it's beneficial to you. But they need to hear from you. Oh, I don't, I don't, need, I don't care. They know me very well. Every, every show, no Kansas Holy Field. <laughs> okay. I am the leader of Black Spa. Okay. They all know me okay. very well. Can you so. tell me a little bit about the show? Because I know you do awards, right? Or is that a so different I do, show? I do awards at all my shows. Okay. Then so Terrence do, just got an award. I do Black Spa Expo every um, September. And then we do Black Spa Awards, which is more so just for my community. Spa Ball Tribe, we do that in December. Okay. So I give awards out all of the... And how do you choose who you get a, who you get? They have to, to be in my community, first thing first. Okay. Um, and then they have to be doing the work. It's not just about before and after pictures. Like, you know, mm. hey, are you serving the community? Are you showing up consistently? And then now I award people that's not in my community, but I see them doing the work and I see they are leaders. We need more leaders. Yeah. So me, I'm, I'm linking up with other leaders. Hey, I see what you're doing. I want to give you an award. You, you're doing great things. Come help my community. Come help my spot by tribe. So that's, I just started doing it this year, awarding people that wasn't in my community. I just started doing it. I love that. And, you know, like I told you before, when you let me know what you need, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. You know, just let me know. Thank you. You know, Thank no, you. because you, you're a real one. Okay. Like you say, well, I'm you're a lot, but she, she, <laughs> well, well, I know if some people, sometimes if you, if you embark on Candace on Instagram and if you hear one of her lives, because yeah. one morning I woke up, yeah. I said, and you were about to go to work somewhere. Yeah. I said, she lighting it up. But if you mm -hmm. meet Candace on, online, you may feel 
that it could be a little bit brass, but that brass is coming from a very loving and honest place. And most people misunderstand that. So I tell everybody, if you only side me up from IG Live, you don't know me. You don't know her. You have right. to come know me in person. You got to come. And I invite everybody everywhere. But mm -hmm. that's why I do that. So people can see the real the real me outside. And that's why you think... But it's not just a social media thing. Yeah. Like people not coming to the shows, not linking up and saying, let's go to dinner. I mean, that's crazy. That's, but that's also why you've been successful too indirectly because you give it away. Well, and I'm very high away. touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're I'm right. very high touch. Yeah, high touch, yeah. I want to touch my people. I want my people to touch me. Like you said earlier, I want to get to where you want to tell anybody, go pay it to me. My Ooh. $6 million I made, go pay it. My $6 million I'm going to pay. Mm. My honey K200 cunt. Go past that. Yeah. The people I help y'all go past that. There's a generosity in you that I don't it. see uh, in this industry, especially as institutions. We are well, not. Everybody humble. think they're competition. Right. Well, I, it's the opulent collaborate. Like, oh, I love do collaborations. Gen tags and you do me and well, and why we can't collaborate? I love I love collaboration. You know? I I work. I prefer to work in teams because I like to learn. No, that's good. Yeah, I like to in, learn. In my storefront spot, I had six massage therapists. Everybody made six figures. It was no competition. So that's why I get so confused with the industry. And then those of us who do have teams and people getting jealous and the alignment gets broken and then other things are happening. I just be very confused by it. Yeah, I think there's no promotion of teams, but I think where we're going, no, I know where we're going right now is integrated because the laws have changed for so much of us. Mm -hmm. uh, estheticians, I feel are sort of hitting a wall with their treatment. You can see it on Instagram. It becomes now. Well, that's because they don't. Come on. Come on. This is what we hear. That's because they're what? Because I want to so hear. That's because no one does personal development. No one does leadership development. No one has coaches or mentors. And so everybody just looking at what else they see. So like if I go to a city and I'm going to say Dallas, for an example, um, before Lanise really got active and now she's the president, Nobody really was making money because there was no leadership there. So if I see you doing this and you're not really making any money, then I start doing it. I'm really not making any money. Somebody has to be the leader and go make the million dollars or the half a million dollars or come to the show or read the books to bring it back to the institutions in Dallas. Right. That makes sense. So it goes everybody just looking at what everybody else is doing and nobody's being the big dog. So what you're saying is basically you you got everybody sort of this gloss over microwavable way of learning instead of going down into the trenches and actually doing that. Somebody that, has to, somebody has to be big dog. Yeah. And come help little dog. Yeah, help little dog out. But people will, will become big dog, but won't help nobody. Well, the big dog you're saying is like yourself, you have to be researched. You have to be studied. You have to step away from the fray. You have to sort of put that head down mm -hmm. and then be able to give out. Because I know there's not a lot of that happening. No, and, and that's, that's the problem. We It's plenty of yeah. people who make money, but they ain't got no, they, they ain't not hosting no dinner. They're not hosting a webinar. They're not hosting a workshop. They don't got a community. They don't have a mentorship. So... Everybody kind of just doing what everybody doing. So it's just an equal playing field at the moment. And nobody makes real money. Yeah, well. That... And, and that it shouldn't be the case. Why should, why should we come to these shows? This show we're at right now, it's, it's not even a lot of white people. It's, an, it's another race. Yeah. They ain't showing no black people. Mm. No damn black vendors, no black speakers, and no black attendees. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's a problem. It's a problem. It's a big problem. And it's something that hopefully, um, one of the things that I... One of the reasons why I'm doing conversations with Michelle is that we can bring that awareness in the